Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Archana, your sound is very, very fizzy, uh, very, very small for us. Yeah. Okay, no problem. You now all it's fine. Now you it's all fine. Me, right? yeah. <laughs> now it's fine. We can hear you very well. So the second person you see is Archana Sharma. Okay, the lady over there. And we call her Archie just to differentiate between the two of us. So Archie and Ashok are going to take us through this uh, beautiful experiment, the, one of the most beautiful experiments on the planet. So over to you guys, let's go. Thank you, Archana. So my name is Ashok Kumar and uh, uh, I'm working for this experiment since last two decades. And um, uh, today we are going to have a glimpse of the CMS experiment, both on the surface, surface as well as in the cavern. So this in the cavern means in the tunnel, we will have a visit and we will show you important com components of this detector. Archie to you. Okay, so I will assist you uh, on the surface and uh, Ashok will uh, go uh, in the tunnel and... Okay. Okay. So Ashok will go in uh, in the downstairs and uh, will show you about the detector. So, um, starting with the introduction of the CMS. Okay. So uh, as you as you know that we have a large hadron collider as a biggest experiment on the Earth. We have a twenty seven kilometer tunnel. We will have a glimpse of this uh, small part of the tunnel where CMS experiment is being uh, situated. There are different components of the CS CMS experiment. Archana might have explained you something. If if not, we will have a real glimpse of those uh, parts of the CMS detector. What we do in this experiment, we are just colliding small, uh, small, small particles, small, small particles like protons. So you might be knowing that protons are very, very small particles. Slides as well. Yes, yeah. we will share the uh, some uh, uh, slides as well where you can see the uh, real, you know, photos of this uh, aerial view of the experiment, but uh, the lines which you will see are actually uh, inside the earth, roughly 50, between 50 meter to 150 meter, the uh, the, the tunnel is situated with the, uh, below the surface of the earth. So this is the tunnel you can see, and there are different parts of the, of the there are different uh, sections of this uh, tunnel where these experiments has been situated. For example, CMS experiment where we are visiting today, there is Alice, there is Atlas, there is LACB, and behind the LACB you can see the airport as well as very good uh, view of the Lake Lemon. It is near to the Geneva city. So uh, in the CMS experiment, we have different parts because when we collide protons and protons, we uh, when we collide protons and protons, we, it creates a lot of energy. A lot of energy, according to Einstein's principle, is converted to mass, E is equal to mc square. And we try to discover these uh, messy particles because these messy particles decays immediately to different uh, stable particles, for example, electrons, muons, you know, hadrons, and so on. Maybe these terms are very, very new for you, but these are the terms which we are going to use uh, very frequently in the experiment. This is the glimpse of the experiment. This is the, <clears throat> so you can see the height of the experiment is roughly 15 meter. The length of the detector is 22 meter. And there are other sections which are beyond this 22 meter. And you can see that if you have a you know cut out view of the experiment, you can see different parts inside it. What we are going to see is the overall view of this experiment. You will see these red parts, which is iron. You can see some interleaved uh, detectors between within these uh, uh, red parts. Those will be uh, muon detect uh, detection um, uh, detecting um, uh, detection chambers. And then you have the inner part where you have the chlorometer. Behind us, we have the big picture. And in the big picture, it is the real view of the, you know, realistic uh, picture of the experiment. So you can see the dimensions of this uh, experiment, which is very, very large. So if you take a full picture, you cannot take in a single camera. But you can see, you know, uh, shortly we will show you the big picture where you, you will have the 
different parts of the detector if you cut detector at the at the middle at the barrel part at the middle you can see the different parts of the detector what are the important features of this detector you have a very very strong solenoidal magnet 3.8 tesla if you do mri or something in the in the uh, in the nearby uh, hospital the rough roughly magnetic field you face is roughly 2 tesla or 2.5 tesla here you have a 3.8 tesla magnetic field so this is very very large magnetic field uh, archana you can speak in this so uh, cms stand for the compact you can come here archana Arch so cms stand for uh, compact muon solenoid and uh, so solenoid is one of the biggest part of the cms and uh, why we need such a big solenoid because as uh, ashok explained we collide the particle in the lse tunnel with the, at a very 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 high energies and uh, when these particle uh, produce the uh, the results as a, of the collisions we need um, a big solenoid for bending these particles so uh, in order to measure the momentum of these particles so as uh, big is the energy uh, as large is the uh, magnetic field the smaller is the bending and uh, vice versa so um, so the solenoid of the this uh, cms is the biggest part uh, this is a superconducting solenoid so a coil made up of uh, uh, fibers uh, it is uh, um, uh, it produces a magnetic field of around 3.8 tesla which is 100000 time greater than the magnetic field of the earth actually and then you pass the electricity through this coil which is very very high around 18500 amperes and it produces the magnetic field a superconducting magnetic field without any resistance so this is one of the biggest part of the uh, the cms experiment the total weight as you can see of the cms is 14000 tons and uh, the cms magnet contributes in this weight around 12000 uh, tons so you can now see that how big is this uh, magnet uh, so um, most part of the the cms is situated inside this uh, this magnet uh, this is uh, all the um, tracker part and the calorimeters which measure the energy of the particles they are inside the uh, they are fitted inside this magnetic coil and in order to uh, uh, <clears throat> in order to uh, uh, contain these uh, magnetic field there is a large uh, uh, shielding or uh, this uh, iron material that you can see in the red color which is uh, outside this coil and uh, uh, here we have our uh, also our muon detectors so um, in the center of the detector there is a uh, when the um, particle collides so many secondary particles are produced. The, uh, the, the aim of the CMS experiment is to uh, photograph uh, the results of these uh, collisions. So it has to measure every particle and then uh, trace back the, the track from where the collision starts. And this we, we do with the help of the different uh, detectors. So uh, the solenoid is used for the bending, then uh, the inner part of the detector, which, uh, which is made up of uh, the sensor, the silicon sensor, which we call the uh, the tracker, it is measured to it is used to measure the tracks of the particle, and then outside is the calorimeters, uh, which measure the energy of the particle, and then outside the uh, the the muons, which are the yeah, so yes, you can see here in this uh, picture. So the first part is the, the silicon tracker and uh, silicon and pixel. There are two type of sensors. These, uh, this is the, uh, the closest to the, to the beam pipe or closest where the collision. So this is very sensitive and uh, receives the most part of the radiations, the background and everything. And that's why this also needs a very careful inspection because uh, of the aging because of this uh, large background and then outside there are the calorimeters so as i said the calorimeters are used for measuring the energies 
So we have two type of calorimeters. So the first is the electromagnetic calorimeters, which measure the energy which is deposited by the electrons and the photons. Uh, and then outside there are hadron calorimeters. So hadrons are the particle which are made up of uh, quarks and gluons, for example, uh, pions, kaons. So these uh, particle deposits their energy in these hadron calorimeters. Also, the one of the other feature of the hadron calorimeter is to uh, measure the particle uh, which are undetectable, for example, the neutrinos. Um, so, <clears throat> this uh, hadron calorimeter also measured these uh, invisible invisible particles uh, uh, because of uh, uh, using the difference of the energies deposited by the particle on both sides. So, uh, uh, if on the one side the energy is bigger than the other part, so the uh, the 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 difference of the energy they uh, they use to uh, contribute they are coming from this uh, invisible particles so uh, yeah so outside uh, this uh, so as i said these uh, all these uh, tracker the electromagnetic and the hadron calorimeter they are inside this uh, superconducting solenoid and outside we have the the, the muon detector so because muons are the particle which uh, uh, cannot be stopped very easily. They can travel through a long distance. So, uh, and these are also one of the main part of the CMS. That's why um, in the name of the CMS, we have compact muon solenoid. So uh, the muon detectors are situated inside the, uh, this uh, <coughs> iron uh, return yoke, which is used to contain the magnetic field which is produced by this uh, superconducting solenoid. So uh, in uh, for the muons, we have, uh, actually we have now four kind of detectors which are used for uh, detecting these muons. So in the barrel part, we have the drift tube chambers, and uh, then we have the RPCs, the resistive plate chambers, and uh, in, the, in the end cap, we have uh, uh, the CSCs, the cath cathode strip chambers, and then we have uh, the gem. These are the new detectors, uh, which uh, uh, the Arshna Mem is uh, the main uh, of our uh, the motivation to bring this detector inside the CMS. And uh, it uh, it there is a lot of hard work, a lot of R and D, and a uh, lot of work from all the contributors. And India is also one of the. Uh, the country who is uh, responsible for this uh, 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 building this detector and uh, um, taking part in the operations. Uh, I think we can... Ashok yeah. is ready now. Yeah. Thank you, Archie. Oh. Thank you so much for the introduction. Over to Ashok now. As you see, he is ready to go and he is going to show us now and walk through some exhibition areas and then downstairs. Correct? Thank you. Yes, Over exactly. To... Exactly. So... You can see the small, you know, shiny components of this detector. These are made up of silicon. These are made up of silicon. So you can see a mirror like a structure. These are silicon uh, detectors. So as Archie was saying that at the center of the detector, we have silicon detectors. So these are the real uh, silicon detectors which we are using. You can see the electronics associated to this. So as the particles, stars particles pass through this uh, detector, they give you electrons and holes as you need as, as you know in semiconductor physics and then then the charge the electrons are being collected here and the signals are processed like you in in your mobile phones you do the analog to digital conversion and from digital conversion you go to the back end of the detector so these are the real small detectors and you can see the big assembled detector of this uh, this small uh, silicon detectors you can see the big detector as well so these are the in detectors being situated in the innermost part of the cms detector we have you know we have to measure the momentum of the particle using these detectors so these are very very small you know one layer is in micron actually and thus there are strips actually there are lines inside these detectors which you cannot see with your eyes so the point is that you have to use care you know i can show you the other uh, this, this part for example here you can see the 
these uh, small detectors using this uh, uh, microscope and you can see these small elements right now you can see the pixelated detector where you have a small small pixels and the electronic electronics is being bomb bonding on this uh, bomb bonded on this detector so you can see small 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 pixels using the using the uh, microscope here but in with your normal eyes you cannot see these detectors so these are the uh, these are the parts of the innermost uh, cms detector now we go to the other part of the uh, exhibition uh, if you see can they see the large uh, uh, muon detector here so for example here you have a big large detector and now you can see the strips actually you can see the strips with your eyes because we are in the outermost part of a detector there you know you have you can see the strips of these detectors with your eyes but in the inner part you cannot see as you go beyond from inner to outer outer side your radius increases your volume increases so this is the big detector which is used used for the muon detection these are the detectors which has been uh, used to successively uh, detect uh, the Higgs particle in 2012 and the Nobel Prize was given in 2013. So these are the real detectors which are being situated inside the CMS. Over to you, Archie. Oh, no, we... Okay. okay. So they are going now towards the lift and there we will see that, uh, so the tunnel is underground uh, at about uh, 100 meter uh, <clears throat> depth. And uh, then um, Ashok will show you the, 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 the different parts of the detector as much as uh, we could see. Uh, so, uh, how this uh, CMS, uh, this is a very huge detector. So the question comes, uh, how it was uh, built inside uh, uh, the cavern uh, at uh, 100 meter down. So the thing is that uh, CMS uh, is also depict a very um, uh, amazing uh, engineering. So uh, the whole detector was not uh, constructed in one go inside the cavern, but uh, the detector is uh, uh, divided into 15 slices. And then um, so uh, 15 parts of the detectors, they were uh, uh, engineered on, uh, on the surface. Uh, one of the reason to do this was uh, because uh, this was um, it is easy to do this access and then also from the security point of view and uh, uh, all the services they are uh, easy to access on the surface so they have uh, uh, build the detectors in 15 parts okay so now you can see here uh, the lift is coming up so it will, uh, you can see the distance uh, is uh, decreasing so the um, please uh, gather your questions we will do a q and a after we, i will try to see how much you understood out of it right So we are going down, as you see, as Archie was explaining, and Ashok is inside the lift. When we were testing the magnet of CMS, this lift was tilting, you know, it's such a strong magnet as uh, it's a, in fact, the, one of the strongest magnets on the planet. Oh, okay. Okay, so now they they are going down, and uh, we will, we are going to lose them. So yes, we continue here until they reach uh, on the uh, in the cavern. So yeah, let let us know if you have any any questions or uh, anything you would like to ask. Okay, questions. One quick question. By the time the lift goes hundred meters down, yes, you quickly. How do the detectors work? We will explain. I will explain in my talk, huh? please. This, this is a long answer, so quicker one. Anyone else who's curious? Why does it go on? Archie, you want to answer? Why should it be so low underground? Uh, you can go ahead, ma'am. <laughs> 
Okay, so first of all, uh, Switzerland is a very tiny country. It's like Noida or Gurgaon and eight and a half million population. They don't have so much space on the surface. Number two, anything that you work with radiation, you want to build concrete structures for safety. If you go underground, half the work is done by nature. And then you can, of course, prepare your concrete walls, which are uh, reinforced by iron and by borated uh, concrete and borated um, uh, perfluoro plastics. That we go underground so that there is absolutely zero risk of any radiation to the residents who live there. In addition, um, it really takes the minimum space. And we'll get more into the answer of this question because I see Ashok is ready in a new room which he's going to uh, speak about. Over to you, Ashok. Yeah, we are in the service, Kevin. We are in the service, Kevin. We have different racks. You can show, Naomi, you can show different racks where we have the services of the experiment as well as fibers for taking the data to the back end. So for example, here we are taking the data from the experiment using the optical fibers. Why we are using the optical fibers? Because electric signal is converted in the experiment to the light because light can be you know transmitted very fast. So they reach the uh, in the in the computer uh, data system very fast. So we are using a fiber readout here. You can see so many racks populated with the uh, with the fibers here. I am showing just one part. There are many, many racks in this area. And we are roughly, you know, half, roughly 20, uh, 30 to 40 meter here. But then we will go to the other part of the experiment. It will be more deep, roughly 100 meter deep. But right now we are in at the intermediate level where we have all the signals coming through the fibers. And you can see how these fibers are being raised, how the cooling of the racks has been done, and how this area has been extravated to populate the uh, to populate the signal readouts of the uh, different parts of the detector. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok. So, 100 million mobile cameras are in this big room taking data. Imagine something like that, but taking data 40 million times a second. That's the challenge. And what you've seen is really the, the brains of CMS gathering all the information from the experiment, which is then taken upstairs to the control room, which we will visit later. Achi, Ashok? So, uh, so as uh, Ashna ma'am said, we, uh, uh, so there are 40 million uh, collisions produced in one second and you, uh, you may be thinking that how we store such a huge amount of data. So in uh, we have a system at uh, CERN, which we called uh, GRID. So this is like, uh, so we have uh, uh, different parts of this GRID. We, uh, we store the, the, the data in, on the different levels. So the first level is called the tier zero, which is at the sun. So the, the raw data, the, uh, the unpolished data, the, the, the data that we got from this uh, uh, collisions, uh, uh, they are uh, stored first in the tier zero. So this is called the raw data. And uh, this gives us uh, the first look about uh, what we are getting uh, in, the, in the collisions. Then there are uh, tier one centers. So this raw data is then sent to uh, the tier one center. So I think there are uh, seven, uh, if I am not wrong, tier one centers, uh, uh, France, Spain, Italy, Germany, and uh, also one of them is Taiwan, then UK and US. So these are the tier one centers. So then this, uh, after making the copies of the, the this data in the tier, uh, tier zero, the data is sent to the tier one. And uh, after that, uh, these uh, from the tier one centers, there are again the tier two centers. So not all the data, but then we polish the data. We keep only those uh, events which are uh, useful for us, which are useful for the physics that we are interested in. And uh, this, uh, this data is sent to the tier two centers then. Uh, India is also one of the tier two centers uh, in uh, this uh, Tata Institute, uh, Mumbai. 
uh, we also have a tier two center. So what is the good thing about is this grid system that uh, any physicist, any scientist sitting anywhere in the in the world can use this data um, situated in the different parts of the of the world. So yeah, so this is uh, one of the greatest because the data that uh, that are produced at CERN is uh, is on the of the order of petabytes. So it is not uh, possible to store this data at uh, one single location. So we have uh, hundreds of thousands of computers that are used in these different grid centers, and uh, they, they 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 store the data, yeah. and then it can be used uh, anywhere in the world. Thank you, Archie. Did we lose a show? Yes. Can you figure out where is he? No. Uh, Meanwhile, question. Okay. I think I'm audible now. Okay. Oh, very good. You're there. Sorry. Keep the questions. We'll come yes. to it later. You can see Ashok okay. now, doing there. Uh, he's no. walked into uh, special keys and special locks. So, Ashok, over to you. Yes. I'm going into the experiment. Follow me. I am in the tunnel now. Now you're in the tunnel, okay. I'm going to open the experiment. Yes, it is. I'm open, you, going you to open the lucky, experiment. You all are lucky that we are able to go in the experiment today. Otherwise, if LHC was running, which it was a few days ago, we were not able to go inside, you know, because of the safety. But today we are so glad to show you our beautiful experiment. And there oh. we are. Look at this. Can you show the whole experiment? Yeah, this is wonderful. Yes. Yes. This is experiment, full experiment. There is a beam coming here, but it is being shielded right now. You have the iron. You have, can see the iron here. You can see the experiment inside. It is a big, this is a big. Now you can see the dimensions of the experiment as well. This is a real experiment. You can see the cavern, full cavern here. You can show a person on the cavern, so then they will realize the scale. If it's possible, Naomi, can you show someone? Uh, maybe on the surface they have not the slide. Not on but, the cavern floor. This is six-story building. They can see this. Yes. Yes. You can see the keys are bending because of the magnetic field on the fringes. So if you have a pacemaker, you have to be careful if you go there, right? In the beginning, we created these rules on how to behave. Look at these keys and even your shoes. If they are, if you're not careful and you have magnetic soul, you will be pulled out towards the magnet. So you, very good, Ashok. Thank you for showing oh. us this uh, yeah. magnetic field. Yeah. Okay. James, be the Yes. Yes. Okay. Now you see the different parts of the detector. In the side balconies, we have the powering stations, powering wires, you know, like the nerves in our body. We have the powering wires, the services, the cooling, the gas for the experiment. It is going like this. So all these balconies are filled with these experimental, uh, you know, experiment service, uh, services which we need to run the experiment. Let us go to the other part. No, I am, I, I am on the... Uh, X2 level, X3 level, I guess. Yeah, X3 level. So second floor. Let us move. So it's a free gym when you do particle physics. You have to go up and down six, seven times a day. So this is the other part of the detector. You can see the other section because experiment is closed, actually. Experiment is closed, so you can see the other... Uh, side of the detector, the big side of the detector, okay? Right. So, you cannot see inside the detector, uh, inside the CMS, because the detector is closed and taking the data, actually. So, and magnetic field is on. So, right now, you can see different detectors. I, know, I don't know. They can see the behind the iron. They can see these RPCs, you know, the detectors, the gas, uh, gases detectors, okay? So, like like these detectors, the restriplate chambers, which are being installed just, you know, adjacent to this yoke, the iron yoke, you have the different parts. You can see uh, on the bottom, actually, some cooling lines, the cooling circuits, the water circuits, which are cooling the detector, actually. And then you can see these blue cables, which are powering cables. The copper cables are either gas cables or the cooling, uh, the water cooling cables. 
the small fibers you can also see which are signal readouts of the experiment the red cables are very high powering uh, uh, voltage cables uh, now uh, the important section you can see on the side you have all these uh, services are being connected to the balcony there you know these are being uh, uh, read out or they are being controlled and there are different levels we are on the second level there is a ground there is a you know a rear level there is a first floor there is a second floor and we can go up to fifth floor actually there are three or two four more floor on the in the in the experiment actually i am now... sorry ashok uh, can you show yeah. the shaft can you show the shaft when you shaft. when you are there yeah so if you look up where are we yeah yeah. So that's the top of the cavern, and as you see, there is a lot of air conditioning or air that is needed because we are underground. We need to have several exchanges of fresh air. By uh, having with the COVID pandemic, we know fresh air means a lot. So we need in this cavern constantly fresh air coming, and we are at an overpressure in the cavern simply because any. Uh, dust particles or anything that can be contaminated can be recycled and then you know uh, filtered out so ashok is now walking to the uh, negative end of i'm going to the yeah i'm going to a floor uh, below okay or maybe a, yeah i can show them the gem uh, services and the control of the gem detector Okay, please show the... Now you can see uh, another view of the detector. Yes. Are we going to the control room later? We can go after the UXC visit. Okay. So let's uh, summarize here and go to the control room. So this is... This is one of our responsibility we are doing. So we have the... We have the gem here, and if you see inside the rack, we have the powering cables, the low voltage powering cables. We have the patch panel for the fibers. We have the low voltage cables, and we have the low voltage modules. The detector is on, so you can see the different channels are working fine. So this means the detector is switched on, and everything is working fine. So this kind of uh, you know system is needed to run the system by powering the different sections of the experiment. So this is one of the part where, you know, Archana and we are responsible to run the experiment. This is a jam experiment inside the jam detectors inside the CMS experiment. Okay, let us move to the other part. I don't know. So there are different racks. So how do you control them? You know, on the mobile phone, you have the touch screen and you manage to control everything. But here for the detector, you need to have all these cables, millions of them. You need to have a cable yeah. management team as well, which knows each cable is labeled, barcoded, and then there's a database. We, can go the, uh, yeah. okay. we are going a one level. We also on the surface of the CMS, we are going. Okay. We will go now. So to we the... can show them the. We are going. So we can show them the experiment from bottom to top. Yes. You are on the floor now. So they can. Yeah. We are on the floor and they can see the foot of the detector. They can see the, you know, full detector from the, from the surface, yeah, from so the floor of the detector. The so you see this big well like thing on the top. This is the 100 meters that goes to the surface from where the experiment was lowered, like Archie was saying, bit by bit. There are 15 pieces, actually 17 in total. Archie is here and she is standing on a plug, by the way. Imagine moving the plug. This plug itself is 200 tons. So the heavy pieces were first brought on this plug, then lifted a little bit, just like a bucket of water, remove the plug that would go under that big, uh, you know, uh, poster that you see of CMS over there, this plug will move and the heavy object or one piece of this heavy object, the red thing you see on the left will then be lowered just like a bucket inside the well. So it has been a very long engineering exercise 
and you see this is the shaft from where the lowering was taking place archie yes so uh, one of the main uh, thing that uh, we uh, that uh, give us the advantage of uh, dividing the detector in these five slices that uh, whenever we have to do some uh, intervention which we call the shutdown periods uh, we can open the detector so now the detector is closed as um, we said that we were taking the dat data a few days back uh, magnetic field is still on and uh, uh, due to some problem in the LSE, now we are uh, taking only the cosmic data. So uh, whenever there is a shutdown period, there is a maintenance period, so we can open these detectors in the 15 slices and then we can do the necessary uh, interventions uh, because uh, um, uh, these different parts of the detectors, they are very complicated. They required the the you regular maintenance, okay, over to Ashok. Yeah. yeah, so we are at the bottom of the detector. You can see the big, uh, you know, big. So as we were saying, different slices, you can see a one full slice here. I don't know they have the light or not. But anyway, no. you can see these different wheels of the detector, different slices of the detector. We are, we are under the experiment. So you can see, you know, all these services going to the different parts of the detector and how we these cannot see, services so we cannot see Archie, we have five minutes to wrap up okay yeah okay. let ashok show the the full scale of the detector which i think it is very impressive so noemi just show a full shot see each of these cables each of these pipes is there measuring things yeah. at the level they can at least microbes. see me and the dimension of the detector yes Brilliant. Thank you, Ashok. Now you can compare my size. Yes, very good. Yeah, we can calculate your height so and calibrate the detector. Very good. So I am I am five feet six. I am uh, five feet six inch. So you can compare the full dimension of the experiment. Very good. I think we will have to wrap up here, Ashok, because we are getting late on the agenda. Yeah. Because coming to the yes. control room will take time. I will show a picture of the control yes. room in my talk later on. Right. Okay. Anything, okay. Any Thank last you. Message, any last message you want to add? No, they, they were lucky that they were able to see the experiment because normally it is not, uh, you know, see well because the experiment was stopped for a few days for maintenance. So, I'm, you know, all of us were lucky that we could see the experiment today. I'm lucky also. I can still see CMS, even if I'm in India. Archie, <laughs> any last point? Yes, uh, so then you are, uh, uh, we try to give you a brief introduction. Uh, it was not sufficient, but uh, due to the lack of time, but uh, yes, in your talk, I think they are going to learn a little bit more about how we take the data, how the shifts are operated uh, and uh, so many other things. So yes, we are, uh, uh, yeah, we are lucky to be a part of this uh, huge, huge uh, collaborations and uh, yeah. Okay, let's give Archie, Zoltan, Noemi and Ashok a big hand. Thank you so much. Uh, let me show, let me show you the hall. You can see that the hall is full. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. We can disconnect. From the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.